Good morning, everyone. My name is Joyce Barnes, and I am the founder of the Modern African Diaspora Experience, an online museum, otherwise known as MADE. And this is my very first ever pitch, so I'm going to be reading so that I can stay on track. <laughs> um, and I'm also, I'm, I'm pitching uh, for the first time here because I know we have a group of entrepreneurs here, and I, we are at very early um, stage in, in our organization, and I really would value your feedback and your opinions about the pitch, but also about the idea itself. So MADE is a for-profit affiliate marketing curated content platform. It is a portal to the history, culture, and influence of the uh, people in the 30 plus countries that make up the Atlantic diaspora, also known as the modern African diaspora. So what is that, right? What is the modern African diaspora? Um, it, is, it stems from the largest forced migration of people um, in world history. And in this case, people um, from Af Western Africa primarily uh, across the Atlantic. And tens of millions of people were, uh, survived the Middle Passage and slavery, and they gave birth to a new culture, a Creole culture that um, you know, has people from many, all, uh, many of the regions in the uh, Western Hemisphere. And to, today, that number of people, descendants, um, is somewhere between 140 and 170 million people, depending on where you check. So MADE will feature stories of black excellence from the people within the diaspora, what I call diasporan dopeness. Some examples are Juneteenth in the United States, or Carnival in Brazil, um, Puerto Rican celebrating our hair, and Puerto Rican celebrating chess champions. Uh, you would tell rapping in Cuba, and of course Rihanna rocking it from, the, uh, from, the, from Barbados, excuse me, Rihanna. Um, black power found in Peru, and escaped slave son saving Canada. Um, the Haitian leader, Toussaint Louverture, needs to be studied by everyone. And the first black president in North America is this guy, not Barack Obama. Um, Brazilian kickers, Colombian singers, people expressing all aspects of their heritage, as well as people living their dreams. That's the people that we are going to feature, uh, people who love being black, like this Jamaican man. These are the people who will make up the stories from the diaspora. Now you may be wondering at this point, um, well, I am not <laughs> of African heritage, so why would I be interested in this at all? Well, the truth is, uh, museums are not only for the people that they are about. And if you are someone who is interested in learning about different cultures, expanding your knowledge, knowledge and experiences, traveling, um, and just you know, wanting to make connections and have experiences that are different from uh, what you may already have, then MADE is for you. Uh, the National Museum of African American Culture and History, that's a lot to say, uh, but the museum in DC saw, has seen about over five million visitors in the last two years. And those people come to that museum from all over the world. So we believe that if you're interested in those things, or if you just love black people, then this is a place where you can come and find a whole lot more of us. Um, no matter what your age, your cultural identity, your region, um, whether you are of the diaspora or just die curious, then this place is for you. So um, what are the problems that MADE addresses? Too often, all people know about blacks outside of the United States, and that includes black people within the United States. We don't know these things either. Um, all we know comes from our, our travel experiences, and I have no problem with travel. In fact, travel is going to be one of the uh, main um, uh, experiences that we will offer, and that's why I'm so interested in Travel Quest. Um, you know, th there's nothing wrong with travel. We love it. But you um, only have brief encounters with people and you don't really get to know who they are or anything about their culture. 
The other place where we get information about people within these countries and even here is through disasters. And you know, that tells a certain story. There are human and natural disasters. There is crime, there is corruption. There are all kinds of ills, um, disease, epidemics, and so forth. But you know, truly those problems exist. And as Killmonger said, you know, when he walked into Wakanda for the first time and he looked around and he saw them, he said, you know what, y'all sitting up here comfortable, but there's people all over the world who don't have it like this, who are catching hell. I'm paraphrasing. So um, that started me thinking about those people throughout the world who look like me. And I started doing research. I came up with uh, the modern diaspora through that research. And what I found was not just um, these problems, but I found, you know, instead of just stories about disease and destruction and uh, dysfunction, what I found were stories about soul and celebration and Isirica. And that's what MAID is about. This is uh, a list of some of the things that people will find in terms of content from our website. This content is going to be free to anyone. So uh, our target audience is um, uh, people 18 and older because we feel like those people are ready to expand their experiences. They have some uh, interest in other cultures and they have some travel money and some uh, ex um, income that they would be interested in the other experiences that we have to offer from MAID, which will provide um, the kinds of interactive and digital as well as in real life experiences that you will not be able to find anyplace else. We are in the process right now of doing some market research and our survey shows that the people who have um, uh, responded, um, their greatest interest is in finding out more about their cultural heritage. So we want to partner with a national, international DNA testing firm. And when people get their results back, we want to be able to give them um, context and provide some digital content for them to learn more about not just where they're from, but the kinds of people that they're descended from. So that's just one kind of experience that we have, and there, there are others that we hope to develop and uh, partner with others to, pro to provide. Um, we believe that this is a growth market. And how will we get revenue? Um, we plan to have sponsorships with travel bureaus in the 30 plus countries. We're gonna do affiliate marketing um, as a business model. We also have e-commerce subscriptions and then the philanthropic part of the organization is our $1 a year campaign. This is a growth market. As I said, there. if we could capture 1% of the 170 million people in the diaspora as visitors, we would be impressed with that, and that's an aspirational goal for us to reach. The truth is conversations about the diaspora have been on the rise since about the 1990s, and that trend continues. So people are becoming more aware and more interested, and we want to um, feed that market. We want to provide content that people would be interested in. We're gonna start our, um, and also there is an, a, six, a $63 billion market for leisure travel just among African Americans. So we want to tap into that um, income as well. We're gonna begin our marketing campaign in the United States, uh, marketing to the 78% of the 48 million African Americans here who are over 18. And we want to include also um, English speaking nations, but we're going to grow by adding countries as the months uh, continue, adding capabilities, adding uh, programs for K through 12. Um, we're gonna have events calendars throughout the uh, diaspora and eventually offer um, scholarly webinars and, and conferences as well. So we believe that we can grow and that we can become influential and profitable by expanding knowledge, connecting people, providing one-of-a-kind experiences, and also improving living conditions for people throughout the diaspora. So how do we stand out from our competitors? Well, first off, 
there are no competitors. I'm sorry to say, but there is no place on the web that offers what we're planning to offer right now. Each country has museums and historic sites and sites, websites that feature information from those countries. Well, they are the very people that we want to affiliate with because we want to bring all that together in one place. That has been done. Um, there is a site called Africa.com that um, aggregates content from the 50 countries plus countries in Africa. And if they can do it for 50 countries, we know that we can do it for the 30 that we're targeting. Um, as, um, I'm sorry, forgot your name. As Bob said, you know, brick and mortar museums are seeing a decline in, member, in membership or at visits, and not all people can, you know, go to a museum. So what we're going to do is offer an, a museum experience um, on the web that's accessible 24-7. Um, and even with these museums that have online sites, much of their content is not available to uh, people who are visiting their site. So we want to address those situations. We also want to offer experiences, not just artifacts. And we think that one of the most important ways that we will contribute um, is by engaging people to communicate with each other so that if you're planning to travel and you have travel quest, you know where you want to go and you know what you want to do, you can still communicate with someone in that country one-on-one -on -one and you know get information that you probably wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Also, our communication uh, module may be useful to people when disaster strikes, a way of helping people connect with each other that way. As I said, we're doing a survey and while we're very early in the stage, very, don't have a whole lot of survey responses, under 100, 98% um, of those people who have responded say, yes, do make, we want it. Um, this is um, our team. We have people from across the United States. We have contacts with uh, Jamaican writers and artists, um, a, a lady who is a documentarian from Tobag Tobago, and um, contacts with people in Puerto Rico and some other countries. Is that my sign that I'm, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, we are still looking to add talent, particularly in the area of marketing. And we're also in a strategic partnership with the O'Neill Center at Wright State University. They are providing um, assistance with web design and content creation, so we're very happy about that. We have our soft launch plan January 1st, 2020. That's going to be a beta site, and I would love it if people would come, you guys, would come and see what it's all about. And then we're going to have our grand opening in February. We're going to uh, disrupt, disrupt Black History Month and show that black history extends beyond the borders of the United States. Um, what do we need? What do I need from you? I first off would love it if you guys would complete our survey. Um, it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. I really just want to know honestly what kind of interest there may be for this out in the real world. Um, if you're interested in our launch and being part of that beta um, group, then if you would provide your email either through the survey or to me today, contact me in any way if you want. I have some sheets here with a little bit more information and my email address. Importantly, if you are an influencer, if you have a blog or a website, and you have uh, friends that you think might uh, be interested in this, please create buzz for us. Create buzz for our January launch. And um, as I said, we're still looking for talent and affiliates. Um, we would love to have some startup capital uh, to build the platform. And most importantly, if you do nothing else, and I mean nothing else, if you would just come to the site on January 1st, 2020, and just register your clicks, we would really appreciate that. Thank you. My name is Joyce Barnes, and I appreciate your time.